Wilds of Eldraine draft season was a fun one here on the channel, and new Wilds of Eldraine draft content has unfortunately come to an end, but that doesn't have to mean that Wilds of Eldraine limited content has to end as well. Over the course of this format, I ended up doing 33 total drafts and earning a 7-win trophy in 9 of those drafts. Putting my trophy rate at 27% to go along with my 62% game win rate over the life of the format, so I thought what would be a more fun way to close out such a successful format here on the channel than with a little top 8 of my best draft decks over the course of Wilds of Eldraine. Of those 9 trophies, I've chosen my 8 favorite decks to battle it out in a single elimination best of 3 top 8 tournament, and after 7 videos over the course of the next 7 days, we will be able to crown what was my best drafted deck in Wilds of Eldraine. Now, to help me with this tournament, I've enlisted the assistance of longtime viewer and patron of the channel, Ruben, to act as my opponent for each of these seven matches. And today we will be starting with me playing Gruul Midrange, which was the first draft posted to the channel as draft number one. It got a 7-in-1 trophy, and I wasn't sure I would top it for the rest of the format. It featured a couple of early ramp spells in Ruby and Bramble Familiar, as well as Root Rider Fawn. It had plenty of creatures to bridge the gap between the early and late game, and usually won with the two copies of Hamlet Glutton, a card that not everyone knew was outstanding just yet. Ruben will be piloting for Color Control, which was a draft livestreamed to the channel on September the 25th. This is yet another base blue-green deck, but one that also splashed black and featured some white for some key cards like Kellen's Lightblades, Regal Bunnycorn, and the adventure half of Threadbind Click. Drop a comment down below to let me know which deck you think will come out on top, and I'll see you in the match. Alright, so we did win the die roll this time, and we'll choose to play first with Gruul Aggro, and unfortunately we have to take, or Gruul Midrange, we have to take our first mulligan of the tournament here. It happens in best of three, so that is fine. We do have a ramp spell in Ruby. I think I'm getting rid of a mountain with this mulligan. Um, the ramp is going to help here. Just have to hope that Ruby doesn't die. We are now two cards down from Ruben here. That will make things slightly difficult. But even if we miss a land, which we didn't, we can cast Firebolt here. Is it better to get in one point of damage or hold up Witchstalker Frenzy for whatever he could have? Again, he's playing a four color control deck that's kind of base blue-green-ish, or green-white, depending on which way you cut it, you saw the deck list about a minute ago. Um, I think, I think I'll just attack. Oh, he's got Kellen's Light Blades. Oh, that's brutal. I needed that, but sure. I guess I shouldn't have played into the Light Blades. Again, I have his deck list, like I've mentioned in previous iterations of these tournament videos. I have his deck list, I'm just, I'm not referencing it. I've played these before played these decks before here on the channel. I just don't see a reason to uh, to reference the deck list as we're playing. That just seems not as fun. So, I probably want to get rid of the beast here. I don't know if I want to cut in or frenzy. We don't have any creature for cut in, which makes it worse. I think I'll still cut in, though. Um, it makes the firebolt slightly better, um, it makes the elemental cost less mana, so I think that's why I'm going to do that. It also makes the Redemption's third chapter worse here. Threadbind click. I think I will again make sure that the third chapter doesn't do much and just get rid of these creatures while they're there and make our elemental cheaper. He's 
Got all the mana he needs, more than likely. Unless he's got a Hamlet glutton like me. No plays. Alright, well... I think I'll just go ahead and play my 4-3 here. Might counter it. Looks like it will get countered. Okay. This is continually getting cheaper, though. Although, ideally I would get to the point where I can cast Stoke Genius before I cast the 4-5 Elemental, but we'll see if we get to that point. Because at this point, we have only have 4 mana and no way to bargain for a Hamlet Glutton, which is not great. See what the play ends up being here. Just another threat bind click. We don't have the threats, so I can understand why he's just running these out here. Um, yeah, as much as I want to save the uh, adventure half of this, I do think I need to just get something on the board right now. Moment of Valor. Alright, we'll go ahead and counter that with a Royal Treatment. Does he have another Spell Stutter? Oof, oh, that's brutal. Spell Scorn Coven. Okay, okay. Man, we are drawing all of our cards in the exact wrong order here. Hmm. I guess we're doing this here now. I don't really have anything else to do. He could play Coven and then we discard probably Curse. Yeah, so let's see. I think we'll discard the Curse. We don't really have anything here, so let's get Bramble Familiar down. draw. You hate to see it. Can't do anything about that. What's the priority for? Is it Regal Bunnycorn? Can't remember if this deck runs one or not. I think it does. Man, we are drawing like none of our creatures this game. We've had, I guess, four. But three of them have been killed. <laughs> I think this one is pretty much over <laughs> in favor of Martin's control deck here. Sorry, Ruben's control deck. All right. 
right, go ahead. Smack me for three. much mana? 7, 8 mana? Go ahead and give that hex proof, which makes that go to the graveyard. Yeah, it says, oops, forgot we had the royal treatment in hand, I suppose. Just playing a 6-5 probably would have been better. Oh, you probably don't want to do that either. It still has hex proof. Yeah, it's still got hexproof from the royal treatment, unfortunately. And then a witch stalker. Honestly, it's probably not going to matter. I think he's still going to win. <laughs> We're not doing a whole lot here. Um, we have access to six mana, so I guess... I guess we do this. The flyers are going to be an issue, but we do have a glutton now to start attacking. Might be flooding out a little bit. So I wonder if, based on how our, our hand went here, I guess it probably would have mattered had he held the glass casket for the familiar, although we had another royal treatment. So, end of the day, I think those couple of misplays by Ruben are, are totally fine because I guess this, this Hamlet Glutton still would have been protected. And so would the Bramble familiar next turn with the extra royal treatment that we had. So... Yeah, see, like we still had the, the second royal treatment, so we would have had plenty of ways to uh, to continue to push through. So there is game one in favor of Gruul midrange. Ruben getting a little handle of four color control. I think he will have the advantage going into game two and three now that he kind of understands how the deck works a little bit and has drawn the cards. So... Again, we are playing best two out of three in these matches, but not doing any sideboarding, just, just running the deck that I ran here on the channel when each of these decks was featured on the channel. Bit of an awkward hand here again, but I, we do have Root Rider Fawn, so I think we'll keep off the back of the Fawn. Mountain would be a great draw. That way we could play Ruby and still hold up Royal Treatment here. That's also a pretty good draw. Now we have three mana next turn. We can Ruby and Root Rider Fawn. can't hold up royal treatment if we do this, and I wonder if that's worth doing. Yeah, you know what? I do think I'm just going to hold up the royal treatment here. I don't want to tap out when he could kill my mana dorks here. Uh, 
Up the beanstalk. What a good one. What a fun one. Now that we have both on the battlefield, I think I'll go ahead and do this. Also because the fawn can still tap for mana and I'm not going to attack with it. I'm obviously forecasting that I have royal treatment here, but that's okay, I think. And I think he knows that, too. <laughs> do I hold back the fawn and hold up both treatments here? Or do I attack with the fawn and just hold up one? I think I'm going to attack... And hold up just one royal treatment here. That's fine. Again, he knows I have it, so he's playing around it now. Choosing not to play attendance, so something else, something's fishy here. Again, leaving up Fawn to hold up the treatment. Don't see a reason to not do that. Looks like he might have Kellen's Light Blades, but that's okay, we've got the Royal Treatment again. Let the beats commence. Alright, there's attendance. Draw an extra card, get a blocker. Plus one, ward one. So the rage could kill anything. There's a chance we have lethal here somehow. So that would do it. All right. Gruel Stompy. Sometimes all you need is just some creatures and be able to attack and get past there. So that does it for this matchup. You can go ahead and take a look at the updated standings and the updated bracket on your screen now. Gruel Midrange, 
takes down four color control in this matchup. Tomorrow, tune back into the channel for the last quarterfinal matchup, Demir Fairies versus Rakdos Rats. Should be a good one. Our semifinals are shaping up to be good. Thanks so much for tuning in today. Tune in back in tomorrow to check out the last quarterfinal and your daily draft content.